Getting the best responses for academia from ChatGPT can be really challenging. I've said it time and time again, and this is from hours of playing with ChatGPT for academic purposes, and that is you've got to have a conversation with it. You cannot rely on a single prompt, but it's getting better. We'll talk about that towards the end of this video, but here are the prompts you need to know to make sure that ChatGPT is working at its best for you. Really important, particularly if you're using Using it to generate first drafts of something in academia. The first thing you should know about ChatGPT is that it's actually very good at criticizing itself. So if you get a response that you're not 100% happy with, you can put please critique the above response, then based on the critique, output the full improved response. It's as simple as that, and I'm gonna include all of these prompts in the description below so you can just copy and paste them. One thing I highly recommend you do with all of these prompts is use something like Text Blaze, which is a really awesome tool for sort of like shortcutting all of the things you commonly type in to ChatGPT. I've got it set up, it's a killer. Now this one is really interesting me. It's interesting that if you add Ask ChatGPT to put something at the beginning of its response, it can reduce hallucinations by up to 80%. And this is backed by research. People are doing this to make sure that, particularly in like academia, where it needs to go find information, you need to make sure that information isn't just something it's made up. Large language models are perfect at kind of like creating plausible answers that are completely false. So this is the prompt that you need. And the prompt is this, always start your answer with the phrase my best guess is an answer step by step. It's as simple as that and by putting that in as a prompt before you start anything is going to reduce hallucinations so important and something that's so incredibly frustrating when you're trying to do academic research using AI. So annoying. The great thing about all of this is that I feel like the prompts don't need to be complicated. These prompts are so simple, and this is probably one of the easiest ones. You can just simply ask, why was this wrong? And what can we improve in this answer? This is perfect if you're doing an essay, if you're doing anything that's sort of like generated text. ChatGPT actually does know when it has sort of like lied a little bit or if something doesn't feel right or it's wrong. So just using these two prompts can easily make your responses much better. And it will just sort of like stop you from copying and pasting something into your report that later you're gonna to have to go through over and over again to get it right. Just by saying what is wrong, even if you feel something is a little bit off in the response, you can get it to self-correct. And then just by saying what can we do to improve this answer is a perfect way for making ChatGPT just dig a little bit deeper into its databases, into, into its capabilities. I feel like sometimes it does kind of just like give the obvious sort of simple answer as if like, here we are, here's the simple answer, to just shut up and go away. But you're like, no, 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 there's something wrong, get deeper. And it normally does a pretty good job after this. Good. I've talked about using metrics and rubrics in my video from a few weeks ago. Check it out here where it said like how to get an A plus in NA essay. But essentially you don't even need to give it a rubric to make sure that you're getting a good answer. The prompt is so simple and you can do this if you are writing essays, if you're generating text and all you need to say is score your answers based on something and you've got to put that something in and then rate them between one and 100. Anything below a 70, answer again step by step. So this just means you can say, score your answers based on and then what you want to achieve. If it doesn't hit that marker, it will score it low and that means then you can uh, get a better response. So it does work with numbers. It does sort of like score itself. It is capable of marking itself and anything less than 70, you do want it to try again. And this is just great, you can put it in time and time again. You can do it sort of like three times in a row just so that you end up with a really great answer. Do that. You don't even need a rubric like my other video. You can just get it to sort of like self-assess which is brilliant. Sometimes we don't know where to start with ChatGPT and we need to know what the best prompt is that we could put into it. It's not always obvious, but you can use ChatGPT to prompt you to create its own prompt, which is brilliant. And this was found in Chain Brain AI. So all uh, credits to them for this one. And uh, I think it's just a brilliant way of trying to get the best out of ChatGPT, even if you're not using it as often as someone like me. So this one is 
becoming an expert prompt creator. The objective is to assist me in creating the most effective prompt. Then it's got all of this stuff, right? You just go and copy and paste it and then you click go. And then hello, I'm here to assist you in creating effective prompts. To get started, could you let me know what the prompt should be about? Once I've generated an idea, we can proceed to craft the prompt together. Brilliant, you go through it step by step, tell it what, it, what you want it to do. It will then work with you and not against you. And also it just won't sort of like spit out an answer and be like, there you are, I'm done. It'll actually work proactively. Really great tool. All of these prompts are in the description, like I've said, because this one is particularly powerful if you don't even know where to start, which is something a lot of academic researchers and PhD students struggle with. Where do you start? Right here, easy. And there's another prompt creation prompt that you can use, which just makes it so easy to get the best out of ChatGPT. It's in the description like all the others, but essentially it's just like, welcome to the prompt engineering process. Your goal as a prompt engineer is to help me craft the best possible prompt that aligns with my needs. If we send that off, you can say thanks for outlining the prompt engineering process. To get started, could you please clarify the topic or subject of the prompt? Once you provide an answer, we will prov provide in refining and enhancing through it together in iterations. Brilliant, once again, if you're not sure what prompt is best, you can use this one and the one that I've just talked about to create prompts. Brilliant, all of this is down below. I uh, use these sorts of prompts daily. So it really is worth putting it into something like text blaze, because it is just so powerful to have these prompts, you know, a couple of keystrokes away. You don't even think about it, at least I don't anymore. And uh, it's a real great way of using these techniques to improve it. And you do really need to push chat GPT to its limits, particularly if you're using it for academic purposes, because sometimes it can be a little bit lazy. If you like this video, remember to go check out this one, where I talk about AI agents that are actually useful for advanced research and how they're finally getting there. It's a good watch if you're interested in AI tools for research and science purposes. So there we have it. There are all of the prompts that you need to know. Go save them into text blaze, save them in a Word document, wherever you need to put them to use them regularly, use them daily if you're an academic using ChatGPT. Let me know in the comments which ones you would add, and as always, I'd love to know what you think. Also, remember there are more ways to engage with me. The first way is to sign up to my newsletter. Head over to andrewstepton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. And when you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks, everything from the tools I've used, the podcast I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract and more. It's exclusive content available for free. So go sign up now. And also remember to check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got eBooks, I've got resource packs, I've got courses coming out soon. I've got blogs, I've got the forum and everything is over there to make sure that academia works for you and not just your supervisor. All right then, I'll see you in the next video.